can put your your mortise lock right here. You want to give yourself a little bit of clearance there at the front, right there, and from the back. So usually I give it about a quarter of an inch. But this, this is important if you have like a glass door or something. I mean, if you don't have a glass door, it's a wooden door, but you still don't want to go too far because this thing's got like a five and a half inch throw to it. You don't want to come through where a panel is. But this is your last adjustment right here. As you will see, I'll show part of this as we're working this thing in, how this thing steps as you keep turning it. Okay, enough of that. All right, here we go. We're going to fire this thing up. Always remember, safety, safety. Get my safety glasses. Okay, we're going to show this from all different angles. But you do have it set up. Everything set up. Make sure everything is tight. Even if you have to tug on it to make sure. This little lever right here, you flip that down, that's the automatic feed. You flip this up, you can pull this back. So you want to always start. You always want to start out from as far as you can. Automatic feed down, and you're ready to go. Now when you're ready to uh, stop it, in other words, you don't want it to go any deeper. And you just flip this thing back the other way. But to set it to get it go is down. Then there's your adjustment screw. This is your adjustment piece that it goes up and down to get that certain, to get that distance that I was telling you about. Because from here to here is how much it's going. As soon as it gets to this, it's going to stop. And you don't want to keep going because what will happen, you'll eventually wear out an area of where the uh, threads are. So you don't want to go any more than, than what this little rubber O-ring has got on there.
noisy and it's dusty. Anyway. Okay. You can see what I was, I was trying to show you how this was working in a little bit at a time each time you turn that crank. Because once this thing's down, you know, you can't do anything with it. But once it's up, then you can, you know, you can push it in or pull out whatever you want to do. And then, of course, the handle, you saw, it just moves the thing back and forth, kind of like a locomotive. So hard doing this on my own. Anyway. And now that we're at that point, okay, I'm going to try to show you this. You can see these numbers, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is in reference to the lock from here, from one end to the other. This does not have anything to do with the outside bevel, be bezel. Just the inside part of the mortise lock. So you measure this, which this measures about five and a half. So you want to go like a half inch more. So you want to go six inch, six and an eighth, as long as you don't get past where your screw holes are. So if you were to measure that, and say you went a quarter inch on each side, then you're looking at about six inches. And there again, you can go six and an eighth because you're your hole pattern, your, your screw patterns, are at seven and a quarter. So you've got an inch left to spare. And you want, of course, you always want to use drill bits to keep from splitting your door, for, uh, door itself. That has to do with anything, putting locks in. You always want to drill holes first. Anyway, that's the distance you get from here to here. And then, of course, I showed you the depth. So you have that. You have the the length of your locomotion. Also, this thing's got a spring. I forgot to show you. It's got a tension wire, a spring tension wire. And it always goes to the top because this thing weighs a lot. And that's the reason for this spring tension is to help, help you pull this. Matter of fact, it'll almost go up by itself. We 